Traders checking in on the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space. The altcoins have been leading the way over the past couple of weeks with most recently ETH being up at the all-time high. Now yesterday we have the Bitcoin bulls making a statement, regaining some short-term control and some attention as we make that test of the all-time high. Can we get there this weekend or do we need to see a daily higher low first? Let's look at the possible scenarios. So we'll start it off with the dollar as always. The dollar bulls have not been negatively impacting the broader market, the S&P 500, nor Bitcoin over this past week. We had a very bullish Monday through Thursday in the dollar, and it's a good sign for asset bulls. Essentially, we can look at it and say, okay, well, if we're not being hurt by the dollar going up, that means the dollar going down can only help the S&P 500 stocks and Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin bulls are riding that momentum. Let's just look at the S&P 500. Very significant bull week after a very fearful week last week. So a complete 180 in sentiment. And the last time we saw a daily consolidation on Bitcoin was during that pullback last week. And then this past week, all bulls in response as well. So most notably, we broke 38.6K, which was the Elon Musk top. And just looking at it in hindsight, it almost just looks like the market was caught off guard. Some bears said, no, -uh, we're not ready just yet. And they drove the price down pretty significantly, $6,000 to the downside. And then, okay, now we're ready, making our way back up to try and confirm the weekly bull flag. We've known this has been a weekly bull flag for quite a few weeks. It was just a question of, are we going to break 28,700 and negate the bull flag or hold that level? And obviously we are holding it. So most recently, I have not been trading very actively in the crypto space. Again, I am pretty evenly split between stocks and crypto for the last two months or so, which is new because I'm either always focused on crypto or always focused on the MJ sector or always focused on something. So there's a lot of opportunity right now in markets all over the place. But the recent trade that I did take in Bitcoin was just adding to my core swing position. And it was recognizing a 12 hour cup and handle. And we had our Musk pump high, healthy consolidation. We came back to test that high and we broke it, but just barely by you know a fraction of a percent so I consider that a double top and there's the bull flag. So we know that after the bull flag, we look for the breakout. So I saw the bull flag forming and I said, all right, well, that's enough of a setup where knowing that I'm only risking profits from the last few months, I will absolutely look to be a little bit aggressive, look to make an entry and increase my position sizing in case we do make that move towards the all time high. So just zooming in a little bit, that 12 hour consolidation, we were looking for an hourly trend change setup. And it was here. This was the low of that 12 hour consolidation. I then saw the size of the bounce and said, that's a notable bounce. I am confident that we will form an hourly higher low when we pull back from here. So I entered pretty much this candle at about 37.1, 37.2. And we instantly pulled back and I thought, ah, I'm about to get stopped out again because I put my stop under 36,000 because it's two scenarios. If 36.1 holds, it's a 12 hour bull flag. If 36.1 breaks, then it's not. So I put my stop under 36 and obviously it held. So now I've got twice as many Bitcoin as I had before entering that trade. So just adding into strength essentially to my core position. And now I still have a good bit of cash where I will play short-term day trades if I'm at the computer when they set themselves up. Otherwise, I will be patiently waiting. And if we do reject from that all-time high, I will be looking to buy a daily higher low because anything above 32,200 is a daily higher low. We have the EMA 12 support to be watching, or I should say, yep, the daily EMA 12 support to be watching for a back test. And the psychology is the same of the cup and handle, where it's just you have a clear left side of resistance. You have an inability to break that resistance level. You pull back in a bull flag. And what is happening when that is taking place is you have bears jumping into new bearish positions where if I enter bearish at 40,500, I put my stop over 42,000 and I hope for a rejection. So you have that going on to lead to the inability to break resistance. And you also have bulls saying, well, we've gone up 
over $9,000 since the last time we've seen daily consolidation, I'm going to take a little bit off and take a little bit of profit up here. So when you get the follow through, it's when those two activities do not offset. Let's just go back to the 12 hour example. They do not offset the buying power. We pull back. Yes. Shorts jump in bulls exit some position, but the bulls that are waiting to buy consolidation outweigh the demand outweighs that supply. And then you get the bull break of the resistance. Every new short that just entered either stops out on the resistance break or is then underwater. And that's where you get the fuel for the next move up. You get bulls buying a break. You get shorts having to cover on the break. And that's what happened on this 12 hour time frame. So right now we have a four hour pullback and we were due for this. We saw a move straight from 37.2 to 41 essentially. So four hour consolidation underway, looking for a higher low. EMA 12 support here, I would call anything above 37.2, a four hour higher low. And we're watching for first hourly oversold conditions, which aren't really in the picture right now. And technically speaking, we haven't really confirmed an hourly downtrend. This move is coming straight off the high of 41,000. We're gonna look for a bounce and for an hourly lower high to form. The question from there is, do we confirm an hourly downtrend and see further four hour consolidation or is the bounce significant enough that the bulls just regain control right away? Let's talk about other scenarios, right? We know the bulls have a lot of favor in this scenario for new all time highs. Always something to be aware of is any kind of crackdown on the US coming out. It's a, an unlikely scenario, but it's one we have to prepare for, a black swan event. So we need to know that that's a possibility at any point and protect against that. Otherwise, the other scenario would be rejecting losing the four hour uptrend and needing a daily higher low to form. So we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. And again, I do believe there will be plenty of dip buyers looking for a daily higher low if that is what indeed plays out. The dominance chart. So you know, bigger picture, we're watching for a weekly higher low and this wick is a bit misleading. The pullback really only got to 6092 and our low here on the weekly was 60, 80 even. So we held a higher low for the moment by 12, I guess it's percentage points, not percentage points, but 0.12%. And we started to bounce on the daily. It's very insignificant at this point. It was one day of shift of focus back from the altcoins, which have been running and making a lot of alt traders, a lot of money onto Bitcoin. And again, in my opinion, we're going to need to see a new Bitcoin all time high to see a new wave of headlines, a new little rush of retail traders FOMOing in and for this bounce to get any follow through. If we don't get over the daily EMA 12, we know this move isn't going anywhere. We have to see a big enough bounce to set up a daily trend change if we're going to be looking for that weekly higher low. Once that weekly higher low is set, we'll be watching for the potential of a head and shoulders, but we don't even need to talk about that now. We need bounce follow through first from these Bitcoin bulls. Four hour time frame, trying to set a higher low. And again, just a lot of follow through is needed for the next few days for this move to be notable. Otherwise, the altcoin bulls are going to keep control. And ETH has definitely been one of those altcoin bulls that has been in control. There's been a great 12 hour resistance line to be watching that continues to reject the price. And I will continue to watch that as long as that is the case. This is the channel that I've been watching for what feels like a really long time at this point. Rejected on the all time high, bull flag, rejected on the continuation. So there's no major red flags on the ETH move. We're just clearly rejecting from this resistance line, which has been the case for almost a month at this point. So we're watching a short term support level of 1556. Looking at it from the daily perspective, anything above 1271 is a daily higher low. And when we're in this bullish market environment, we're continuing to have bulls buy short term oversold conditions and lead to very significant bounces. So on the five minute time frame, again, we watch for first oversold. Here was a dump from 1745 to 1645, essentially a hundred dollar dump hit five minute oversold. Pretty much look at every time we're hitting five minute oversold. It does not stay there for long here. We ended up going from 1682, five minute oversold and made our way all the way back up 60 plus dollars higher. Another one here, we had a $50 real quick bounce, five minute oversold again, another double bottom significant bounce. Another one just earlier, 1660, all the way back up, $50 plus bounce and heading down towards five minute oversold again. Eventually that will no, no longer be the case and we won't see the five minute oversold bounces get as significant follow through. And what you can be watching for the shift to say this time it's different, 
Every time we hit five minute oversold, that marks the bottom. We don't break that low. Look at every example we just went over. Once that's hit, that's the low. So if we hit five minute oversold, we get a bounce and then we break to a lower low. We know, okay, this time it's different and we need to zoom out and then look for hourly oversold conditions. And certainly the last time ETH had hourly oversold, we got massive follow through from that spot. As long as we keep, we keep seeing bulls aggressively buy short-term oversold conditions, we know that there are still plenty of bulls in this space. So ETH, the four hour time frame, consolidating a little bit. We've been holding the EMA 12 for a few days at this point, and we're still grinding it. If we fail the all time high, 1764, and drop down and break 1646, it's a notable momentum shift. It's a head and shoulders, which is essentially just going from a four hour uptrend to then a four hour downtrend. And that would tell us to zoom out and watch for a daily high or low and watch the daily EMA 12 support. ETH BTC is pulling back as well. We got a bull break with zero follow through. So again, we're watching this daily EMA 12, which has been holding for a month. And if that is lost, then we will see that Bitcoin dominance chart get follow through on its bounce. And we'll be watching for the potential for weekly consolidation on ETH BTC as the dominance chart sees that weekly bounce. Have to see more follow through, but the setup is shaping up. Link USD, got to be watching the wedge here. We've seen plenty of instances when the cryptocurrency bulls are strong, where rising wedges can break bullish. But this is a rising wedge to be paying attention to in the short term. It can absolutely break bearish, and all that would mean is zoom out and look for a daily or weekly higher low, but it would be a notable shift in momentum if we lose this 12-hour uptrend from here. So right now, anything above 2282 would be a higher low. If we were to fail the all-time high of 27 and lose the uptrend, again, it would be a notable shift away from those bulls. Otherwise, they're holding on pretty well. Just a slow grind up. We're not getting massive follow-through on these all-time highs. Bulls aren't complaining because, again, we are seeing consistent all-time highs, but bulls running out of a little bit of momentum, just keeping an eye on that rising wedge. And also it's the link BTC chart that has us extra cautious. It's already consolidating on the weekly time frame. Well, I guess not exactly. Need to need one more little low. So if we break this support level, this double bottom, then we're consolidating on the weekly time frame. And again, the, the strength comparative to BTC will be fading significantly. I'll say it once, I'll say it a million times. The altcoin bulls want the correlation between their US dollar and Bitcoin pairing charts to be tick for tick in bullish uptrends. If it's not that, then it's not an ideal scenario. And there are plenty of coins out there that are in ideal scenario. And obviously it shifts from one to the other. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I've been harping on, keep an eye on Binance. I've been saying it for six weeks, it feels like at this point, I'm gonna be right eventually. Finally, bulls getting their moment to shine. And it all started with this big volume bull break. And there was some news behind it. I'm not the fundamental guy, so double check on what that is. But temporary little climax on the daily time frame now. But that was a massive move up. 47 was the all-time high, and we shot up to 75. So that is very significant follow-through of 70% plus. And right now we're looking at four-hour consolidation. There are no red flags on this four-hour consolidation. But if we keep ticking down, it'll start to get significant enough that we do need to be cautious of losing the four-hour uptrend to see daily consolidation. With what the current setup is, we're gonna look for a pullback. We're gonna to look to ideally hold the EMA 12 and probably set up a daily inside bar tomorrow. But we'll see how that shapes up. Have we seen first five minute oversold conditions? Yep, we got just above it here. Solid 5% plus bounce. So bulls front ran it a little bit. And then we kissed it down here, another four or 5% bounce. So now we're zooming out and watching hourly RSI not close to oversold. And it was the BNB BTC chart that just slowly shifted and then obviously starting to break out significantly now and creating the space for a weekly trend change to try and set up into later February. Whenever this tops out, can we form a weekly higher low and higher high? But nice to see the Binance bulls back in the spotlight, just biding their time. And it started with all coins showing a lot of strength and Link and, and Binance were doing nothing. And they had been two of the stronger coins a while ago. It's just sector rotation. It's just shifting going on. 
and it happens in the broader market. Whenever we see a healthy broader market, the tech sector runs while the financial sector cools off. Then the financial sector runs while the healthcare sector cools off. It's just constant money flowing around. And we're seeing that in the altcoins. And then it was Link that caught up and hit all time highs while Binance still lagged way behind. And now it's Binance catching up. So again, it's just, just imagine that flow of money just going around the cryptocurrency space from different projects, whether it's different subsectors like De DeFi coins or privacy coins or individual coins, there's money flowing around. ADA, USD. So nice breakout. Again, big follow through. It had the same slow grind here that Link is currently seeing where we did get bull breaks, but just no real follow through. And now the past two days, we're getting significant follow through. And it's because the BTC chart is breaking out. So again, directly correlated, little bull flag and two huge green days, little bull flag, hardly even, but two huge green days. So it is that buy, that Bitcoin pairing chart when it's going full steam ahead with the US dollar pairing chart that gives that follow through. And because Link does not have that on its chart, we know we're not getting that follow through. So ADA, four hour in an uptrend, big upper wick, potential little temporary climax. Do we still have an hourly uptrend? Yep. Just looking for an hourly high or low. Again, just a climax and a temporary top. We're looking for a five minute higher, higher low still. So if we form a five minute higher low, it's a big enough pullback that we're gonna look for a five minute lower high. So just the zoom out game, we'll look for an hourly higher low. If we lose it, we'll look for a four hour higher low. And again, directly correlated to the Bitcoin pairing chart. Dogecoin. So just covering this for fun because if you are confident trading, it doesn't matter if you're trading pet rocks, you can make money. So if, if the volatility and the volume is there and the liquidity is there and you are a confident trader, then absolutely trade this coin. So I like the 12 hour time frame for the most clarity just because it's a very clear uptrend with EMA support. And we have not set a 12 hour higher low recently. So I wanna zoom in and find where was that last support. And I'm looking down at 407 as a key level here. We had a high, low, lower high, higher low. We are trying to break resistance, but technically speaking, if we do not break five, six here, it is still remaining in this equilibrium. So this is not your standard equilibrium, but it is still condensing price levels there's just a lot of space before this potential lower high right now. And then we would look for a higher low, anything above 429. So it is a four hour equilibrium to be keeping an eye on. The daily time frame is an uptrend. Well, we don't have a clear higher low and higher high since the breakout. Let's see what the most likely scenario is here. And again, you always gotta be watching Musk and Twitter for any mentions. He loves playing the Doge game. So. I would be watching this where that four hour equilibrium would take priority for short term. If we see a lower high compared to 736, I would just be viewing this as a big old equilibrium as well with a high, low of the pullback, inability to break resistance, and then we would look for a higher low compared to 2.2. But as long as the four hour higher lows remain intact, we know we're not setting that daily lower high at this point. So all about five, six in the short term. If we pull back further, we then look for a, a higher low compared to four, two, seven. And the tighter we get, the closer we know we are to a volume and volatility breakout. So that is where we stand in the cryptocurrency space. Congrats to the bulls. Establish your game plan. What target are you gonna be selling at? If we get a new all time high, are you gonna be adding any daily consolidation? Are you looking to buy a four hour higher low? Are you waiting for first hourly oversold conditions? These are all things that you can know beforehand. So there's no guessing in the moment. If I say I'm not gonna trade unless it's first hourly oversold conditions, it really simplifies things and it allows me to just focus on one thing and wait for it and be patient and let the trade come to me. So ideal here would be for the bulls to maintain the four hour EMA 12, because again, when that is lost and when the uptrend is lost, Daily consolidation is then underway. Keep an eye on the S&P 500. It hasn't been having a huge impact, but it is absolutely having an impact. The fact that the last time Bitcoin saw daily consolidation was here, and it's been all bulls since here, is absolutely 
a factor. And I hedge my Bitcoin core position by shorting the S&P 500 at, at certain times. And I have other exposure. So essentially all my long assets, whether it's gold, silver, individual stocks, S&P 500 itself, I will hedge that at different times. And I hedged it on Friday with things being so strong, entered a short. So I know that if we were to pull back Sunday night or if we were to pull back Monday, that I am hedging my bullish exposure. That's the way that I'm playing the game. Hope the way you're playing is going well. Don't forget to do good things out there and we will see you next week.